Hey everybody, it's Preston. Welcome back to the shop. So, we're in a different half of the building than I usually am, although not unfamiliar to some of you if you've watched the video I did on the wood kiln or the phase converter. This is uh, an introductory video to one of my next projects, which is going to be working on this El Camino I'm sitting on. If you've uh, followed me on Instagram for quite a while, you'll know a couple years back I bought a 1980 El Camino, and we'll get it out in a minute. It's in the other barn. Uh, but something about that car, uh, just, I learned a lot when I bought it. Let me leave it at that. Uh, I'm not natively a car guy, although I enjoy it. And I did some work on my 67 truck a couple years ago that uh, seems to have kindled a, a little spark. And so I thought I would play with uh, play with a, a Chevy that I could do small blocky kind of things in. Uh, I picked the G-Body series because there's lots of manufacturers for performance parts. And uh, this happens to be an 85 El Camino. And I picked it because I'm one of those few that kind of likes that body style. I, few, there's, there's a lot of us, but you either love El Caminos or you hate them. Um, the goal for this car is to learn. I'm going to learn a bunch of stuff. I'm going to do things to this car that I wouldn't do to my 67 Ford because it's an heirloom and this thing ain't. Uh, I'm going to paint it with some help from my friend Bud, who I'm sure you'll meet in a future video. We're going to uh, put a different motor in it, and there'll be videos on that. I'll tell you right now, we don't know what we're going to put in it. Uh, Performance-wise, beyond just the motor and, and horsepower, which is always good, a couple of goals. One, I need to be able to roast the tires at will. And the other is I want to build it for autocross or street racing. I just refer to it as fast corners. I like uh, zero to oh my god and then just as fast around the first corner. We're going to uh, do the suspension on it and have some fun with that and swap the motor, have some fun with that. We're going to uh, do a little interior work. We're going to put some different seats in it, have some fun with that. It's going to be all about learning some stuff and uh, probably learning a few things the hard way. So let's take a quick look around. I'll tell you about this thing. So as I said a moment ago, this is a 1985 El Camino. So this is the G-Body edition. If you just look at the front end, it looks like 90% of the other cars they made. It's not until you get to the party in the back, I should call this thing the mullet, the party in the back, that you recognize this very distinct body style. So there's not a whole lot special about this just looking at it today, but what is special about it is the fact that it has no rust that we have seen. One of the advantages to buying this car was that it had a shell on it. It's had a cap on it its entire life. You've got a nice little bed mat. But that means that the area underneath the windows uh, in here, where they frequently rust, as well as the bed, are in super good shape. No rust at all. The rear frame rails in the back, where these cars are notorious for rusting, back between the frame rail behind the rear axle tends to rust, I can tell you is in great shape. Interior-wise, um, the previous owner that, that put the booger blue paint job on it um, had the seats reupholstered, and, and they sit pretty nice, and put a carpet kit in it, and I will tell you, put the carpet kit in it poorly. But in the end, this car is going to become... Uh, black and gray. I've got some real nice powered seats that are going to go in it and uh, that'll be part of its transformation. Power nothing on the windows and door locks. Um, it had two outside mirrors. It doesn't now. It's just got this one silly mirror here that will go away when we start doing the body work. Sorry about the exposure. It's kind of hard when I got big doors open and being inside too. Oh, oh there we go. Alright so just some pretty standard hubcaps on it, no big deal. This side of the car, let me set you down, this is where the body damage is, we know of. There's a little crease in the door right here, there's been some bugger work done here, and this door doesn't quite shut right, it's not hanging correctly. So we know there'll be some work to do there, we'll sand it all off, 
the body trim, the body side molding is all going to go away. We picked up the car a few weeks ago and it just sat on the trailer and finally got it off and yesterday was the first time we actually got to stand here with our head under the hood. What's in it is the original 305 motor. Um, somebody's been in and tried to clean it up a little bit. My understanding is that 305 turbo fire sticker is incorrect for the 85 model year. They put the cheap plastic wire loom on a bunch of stuff, but uh, they deleted the, deleted with an ax, the uh, smog pump, that's gone. And they had a, a number of vacuum leaks. In fact, when I went and looked at the car originally, it wouldn't idle because there were so many vacuum leaks on it. We've now got those all plugged up and the plugged up or connected where they're supposed to be and it idles real well. Uh, there's some there's some zip tying going on in here right now simply because uh, if you look back in here down in here you can see some zip ties going on. The wiring harness had fallen down between the valve cover and the exhaust manifold and was baking just all kinds of bad news so you know like anything else you get something like this the first thing you do is you undo all the all the buggers uh, battery isn't in right wasn't clamped down it still isn't it's not the right frame size for the battery it drives down the road pretty good desperate need of, sh of front shock absorbers but you know doesn't pull dramatically goes stops does all those kinds of things Let's start it up a minute just for grins because that's what you do in these videos. And there it sits and runs. The car hasn't been driven hardly at all in the last couple of years. So the more I run it, the better it's going to wind up running. That's enough of that. If you're looking, uh, one of the things you notice is that there's no rust back there against the firewall. We're pretty excited that what we have to work with is definitely workable. Of course, nothing we're looking at is going to be here when we're done, but by virtue of the fact that it's in reasonable shape means that we've probably got something decent to work with underneath, as well as I have a place to put all this stuff when it comes off of here. And that's the other El Camino. So now that I've gotten it off the trailer and in the barn, I've found just a couple minutes to poke around with it. Like I said, we've found a few things vacuum wise, seems to run really well. We're gonna swap out the wheels and tires that are on it now for the set that's on the other El Camino. Two reasons. One, vanity. The wheels and tires, the wheels on the other car look better than the hubcaps. Oh, they're not what I will have in the end by any means, but they're better than the hubcaps. And two, the tires that are on those other wheels are nearly new and have been stored indoors for what time they haven't been rolling down the road. These tires are old. I know nothing about them and I don't like old tires. So. We're going to do a quick swap on that, it'll make the car look a little better, I'll be more comfortable driving it, and that'll let us tool around in it a little bit while we're searching out parts and uh, learning enough to figure out what we're going to do. If car stuff really isn't your thing, I totally get it, that's not what this channel has historically been. Uh, keep subscribing, keep notifications on, I will be getting back into finishing the CNC plasma table this winter, and you can just skip all these videos. If you're new to the channel, because you do G-Body stuff or you like El Caminos, welcome. Uh, please hit the subscribe button and uh, you will see these videos as we do this. I'm going to turn the camera around and we'll do a little fast forward as I drag the other Elko out and do the wheel swap. been a little while since I uh, swapped out the old steel wheels that came on this car and put the mags on from the other El Camino. 
and those wheels don't fit any better on this vehicle than they do on the 1980. In fact, they're worse on this car. So I asked around and asked around, and after about three iterations, I got steered to a, a local shop called Fisher's Shop. They're, um, by logo and advertising, they're a four-wheel drive diesel kind of shop. Turns out their guys inside are skilled in a lot of areas. John is their wheel and tire guy, among other responsibilities, as I understood it. Uh, he took the time and brought the car in and measured what I had for stock, spacing, and capability on this vehicle. I decided to go with just a standard off-the-shelf wheel. These are 17 by 8 wheels. They're made by US Mag. They're just, you know, off-the-shelf kind of deal. Uh, a lot of considerations led me to not want to do a custom or a three-piece wheel. One of those things is that I wanted the car squared off, so same size wheels and tires all the way around. Um, you can get a lot more wheel in the back, about two inches, um, but I wanted to be able to rotate them because I wanted a fairly soft tire. The tires are 25540 Dunlops. They're Dereza ZZs. Um, these were recommended to me again by John as being a tire with a, a soft compound that wouldn't take a long time to heat up and get traction. Autocross is one and done, so I needed something that would stick right away. That wheel and tire combination, 17 by eights with 255 40s, fits the car nice, has room, doesn't rub, and it will allow me to lower the car down when I set it on coilovers. If you're wondering what you can put under there safely, this is about as much as you can go unless you want to spend big bucks. Then you can start buying like a half an inch here and there. Um, again, uh, this was a super good place to start for me, and this is what I'll run in autocross next year. So anyways, we got wheels and tires on it. Uh, you probably see in the background it's already got a different seat in it. That's a whole nother story. I'll have a video on installing those seats. In the meantime, take it easy, and I'll see you next time at the shop.